Welcome back, folks. Gary Mazarov. I will be joined by Gustavo Farrell momentarily. Laura McCormick. You watched Andre Perea from Mexico. Side out. This is the first of two. I should say it's the second of two men's semifinals. This is the fourth stream match today. We should have four more for you. David Bobby Horn just skipped the ball in. One zero, game one just started. Side out, Horn. David Bobby Horn also played doubles. They lost yesterday to Canada in the quarterfinals. Second serve. Nice hands from the Mexican. Andre lives in San Luis Potosi in Mexico. And Laura will be in his hometown at La Loma again for the World Juniors in November. That's right. A fabulous facility there in San Luis Potosí. Winner of this match will play in the final against Carlos Keller from Santa Cruz in Bolivia, who beat Rodrigo Montoya in a tiebreaker. Great match. Earlier, Paola Longoria beat countrywoman Samantha Salas 2-0. And Ronda Rasich came back in games one and two and beat Gabby Martinez from Guatemala 2-0. So that'll be a rematch of last year. Dead ball hinder, replay, first serve. Perea's been on this stage before. He got to the final in Santa Cruz a few years back. Snap backhand winner by David Bobby Horn. 0-2, game one. Great rally, folks. Horn controlled just about the entire point, yet didn't cash in. Great gets by Perea. And here he is, leading in game one, 2 1. Danny Maggi from Buenos Aires in Argentina is our head ref. 
Maria Paz Munoz from Cuenca, Ecuador. It's one of the lines persons. Sergio Acuna from San Jose, Costa Rica is our other lines person. Great pass left side, backhand, Paria. This is the 31st edition of the Pan American Racquetball Championships here in Temuco, Temuco, Chile. We were here six years ago as well. Horn serving, he's coached by David Ellis. Paria is coached by his father, Fabian. Oh my, what a great get. Great court presence to get to the ball and then <laughs> doing something with it, athleticism. Side out, left side winner by Horn. These two have matched up several times before, um, you know, on the pro circuit. And so different to see them on the international stage. Both dressed in red, Laura. Out for blood. <laughs> Tied up at 2-2. Two -two. Had what he wanted, but skipped it. Andre's trying different serves. See what works. Wow. That's, that certainly worked for Horn. <laughs> Three serving two. First lead of the game for Horn. Little over hit on that serve. Ball kissed off side and back wall for Padilla. So he tried, Laura, he tried uh, Z deep into the backhand side of the last two. And uh, Horn answered both times, rolled him out. Trying to switch up that serve and go to the forehand. But he'll need a second serve here. Backhand winner, Paria, two serving three in game one. Semi-final number two, the winner will play Carlos Keller in the final tomorrow. Four stream matches tomorrow. We have four more after this match today. A lot of entertainment available for you folks. Stay tuned. Yeah, the next match that we'll be streaming after this is the women's doubles. It'll be Chile versus Guatemala. What a surprise on that one, huh? Team yeah. Chile, seated eighth, knocks off Team USA. 2-0, may I add. Feels good to do that at home, too, I'm sure, for Chile.
four, serving two. Errant shot by Padilla. Tried to do too much with it. We hadn't seen that shot in a while, Laura. The wraparound, three, four walls, but it cleared him out. It was very successful. 2 5, Paria. Folks, you just saw Horn take that ball off the intermediate hop like Keller did earlier in the last match. Not trying to overhit it, but just snap a controlled overhead and clear his opponent out. Five three in game one. Temuco Chile. Cross-court winner. A lot of variety in that point, folks. Six serving three, USA leads. It's not all pound the ball, especially with the gearbox ball now being used. Time out. Yeah, I think um, Andre Priya and David Horn are both really great examples that it doesn't have to be all power in this game. You can see David Horn down in the timeout, getting some advice from his doubles teammate, Thomas Carter, and Dave Ellis there coaching on the left-hand side. These guys are fighting to go to the finals tomorrow where we already know the, the winner of this match will face Carlos Keller from Bolivia. He just defeated, oh gosh, I'm going blank from watching so much racquetball today. Rodrigo Montoya. <laughs> Great match, tie break. Yeah, Mexico always has a strong presence at these events. They were in almost every match that we streamed today. Aside from the fact that Longoria and Salas played each other in the first match of the day. So we had two Mexican women in our first match. Puts a toll on the officiating crew as well because it precludes the Mexican officials, which there are five from doing those matches. Five countries represented as part of the officiating crew here. Actually, six will add Ecuador to the mix. <laughs> You're watching Andre Paria, who lives in San Luis Potosi, Mexico, serve to David Bobby Horn, who lives in Pleasanton, California, which is in the northern portion, East Bay. Outside of Oakland. Point four six, game one. Yeah, David Horn originally from Stockton, California, where we see a lot of racquetball players come out of, including his coach, Dave Ellis. Well, we're going to welcome compadre Gustavo Farrell. Thank you, Gary. Good to be here again. Well, you're watching Paria serve to Horn, 4-6 in game one. We 
take a break, Gustav. We're going to ask you to uh, let the, the listening audience know what a great job it's been this entire week, week and a half here in Temuco. I had the opportunity to play Mr. Barrija four or five years ago. He was gracious enough to give me a couple points. Well, if I recall correctly, you beat the point spread. I think he was He's seven. He's asking, excuse me. Uh, I think he's asking for a court, uh, hinder, but in my opinion, uh, he, he ran right behind him. He had no opportunity. That's a good call. Gustavo, these guys have played each other many times, play on the tour together. Uh, if anybody has an advantage, might it be Paria because Horn has played in the doubles portion as well over seven days? Well, I think uh, that's a good observation, but I think both players have played singles and doubles. And in talking with, uh, uh, with uh, Bobby Horn on the way down here, he mentioned that uh, he was very focused now on the singles play. In fact, was training very, very hard to focus and to, in the next few years, be at the top in the sport. Uh, Barrij has started to play some doubles, uh, but obviously focuses more on the singles play. Well, what, I'm referring, what I'm referring to is in this event, Mexico has a full team. Well, the U.S. effectively does, but both men, two men and two women, uh, played in both the singles and the doubles portion here. And Andres is playing singles. I understand, yes. You're, and that is correct. Yeah, Parrilla is able to uh, concentrate all his energy and effort on the singles. And Bobby, having had to play two events, uh, obviously takes a toll on the body. I don't care what condition you're in, it's a disadvantage. Yeah, especially uh, the mindset of Bobby is, hey, I'm a, I'm a workout machine, it's no big deal, but it takes its toll. In the previous match, I commented the same, that uh, Montoya was playing two events, and I do believe that affected his loss to uh, Carlos Keller. Good point. Maria trying to tie it up at nine in game one. 31st Pan American Racquetball Championships. Should be an avoidable hinder. Point. I don't believe he's appealing just he's disgusted right call so we're tied again folks at nine Bobby Horn Team USA trying to get to the final Frustration by Bobby Gustavo. Andre is very, very procedural in his play. He, uh, all his motions, all his movements. If you watch him, repeats himself. 
Great point. I remember watching him train in Dominican a few years back. He was on the court by himself for about an hour and a half going through various shots and drills. 20 minutes here, 20 minutes there. Incredible. <coughs> Great discipline. I think his uh, father, Fabian, has a lot to do with that. He's their uh, father and trainer as well. Time out here. Folks, you're watching the first game of the second men's semifinal in the 31st Pan American Racquetball Championships. Started in 1987 as the Torneo de las Americas, Tournament of the Americas, which was held in, I believe, uh, Caracas, Venezuela. And we hope to have the Venezuelan team back. Uh, they will be in the South American Championships come next month, end of May. I believe there will be, if Peru fields a team, there will be seven teams. Very good. That's nice to see them back. They have not been in all the uh, major international events, so that would be wonderful. We're looking at uh, coach and father of Andrea Parrilla. Yanko, right Yanko Renteria, the other coach, was in the picture. So what does Horn need to do here? He was control, uh, at least he was ahead for most of the game. Now he finds himself with a two point deficit. I believe these, uh, these guys met a couple weeks ago in a tournament up in the Chicago area and uh, Andre prevailed, one of the pro stops there. Fantastic match as well. No mistakes. I think that's what Bobby has to do. No mistakes. Yeah, he had his opportunity there to end the rally, and he floored it. 12-9, game one. Deep ceiling ball, and Andre was able to take it back ear and roll it left side. So, different twist. He gave him a uh, kind of a half. Z lob to the forehand side. Uh, we saw a lot of success uh, by Rodrigo, his compatriot, against Keller with that serve on the second serve. I think, ball. I think that in the previous game where Montoya was playing Keller, that he ended up having to take too many second serves because he was not getting his first serve in. Great snap, pinch winner right side by Horn. Enduringly, we call him Gustavo. Horn of Plenty. We have poetic license here in the booth. Reverse pinch attempt into the floor by Horn of Plenty. Andre trying to close it out. See what serve he gives him.
Wow. That was a backhand into the left front corner. Very powerful. Did not come out. Skip ball. He finally got one in. He's saying, finally, finally. Pace, angle. See if he does it again. Ball didn't clear the short line. 20 feet from the front wall, 20 feet from the back. back nicely. Ida Vuelta has been one, one, two points. He's converged the lead. He's, he'll be serving to tie it up when we come back, folks. Stay tuned. We're going we're staying here, folks. On the right-hand side there of the picture, you have uh, Fabian Parrilla, which is Andrea's father. And I have to say, he's done an excellent job of training this young man. Very hard to uh, train someone and, and more so train your own kid. Also, uh, Andre's sister, who did not make the Mexican team this year. She's still living at home, I heard. <laughs> but uh, it's not going to kick her out unless she makes doesn't make the team next year. <laughs> Thank you to our producer, Laura McCormick, for providing that info. Anecdotes, folks. Very important. Second serve, Horn. Coached by David Ellis. There we go, Gustavo. Tied again at 13, trying to close it out. Good match. First serve percentage is way low. I agree. It's, it's great to see the variety that each player has, though. If something's not working, they have the wherewithal to insert something else that's more successful. Game point number one. And there it is. Game point number one cashes in 15-13 in favor of Horn. And we'll be back. Temuco. Gary Mazarov, Gustavo Farrell, Laura McCormick. We're here at the... Herman Becker Complejo in Tumuco, Chile. City of, we're guessing between 400 and 500,000. As of 2002, the population was 260,000 people. Gustavo, inform uh, our guests on the air about the hospitality, incredible hospitality this week and a half we've been here it has been uh, I, I know we were here six years ago and uh, I was pleased with our visit back then but I have to say this trip it's been exceptional the hospitality the the people the venue the hotel the food um, the club everything we've we've seen and done this week these 10 days has been above par rating on a 10 on a 1 to 10 scale. Great. Thank you. So Danny Maggi, our head official, is starting game two. Padilla serving to Horn. Horn came back and won 15-13 in game one. The only, the only part that has not been exceptional is the weather, but it's been cooperating. Not much control over that. That's correct.
So he's calling a replay. And perhaps he's going to appeal failure to move, avoidable hinder. No room. The offensive player, once he or she has struck the ball, becomes defensive. And they have an obligation to give a direct path, unobstructed path, to their opponent. So the question is, was there an unobstructed path? Well, apparently, uh, Danny Maggi did, didn't think so. So he replayed that point. 2-0, game two. Let's see if this goes the way of his uh, compatriot, Montoya, who dominated game two after losing game one. saw folks Bobby put his left hand up indicating he thought that the serve had cracked out for a winner control, a of, con, excuse me control center court a lot of pressure Bobby keeps driving the ball right back at him not giving Andre a chance to uh, get back in position Three two. So zero two to three two. Pressure on Perea. Great shot. Had a conversation with Bobby on the way here after arriving uh, last Thursday, and he said he was striving to be in better shape than anybody in this tournament, and I have to say, he looks like he's in very good shape. Chances are if he had a chance to play a third event, he would have. Appreciate the camera views here, folks. Very, very clear. Knowledge is a great shot by Paria. So we're tied at three in game two. Danny Maggi, our head ref. Thank you. Maria Paz Munoz and Sergio Acuna, our lines people. A lot of international flavor. Head ref from Argentina, lines persons from Ecuador and Costa Rica. Score now 4-3, Andre Parrilla serving. Ceiling exchange. <coughs> Gustavo, we talked about that earlier in the week with the uh, inclusion of the gearbox ball we've seen racquetball taken to a different uh, protocol if you will I want to say the uh, so your thoughts on the ball I like it I think the players like it the coaches difference is now you can actually hit a ceiling ball and they are hitting ceiling balls used to be you would get a setup off the back wall with the previous ball it was so fast Errant splat attempt by Paria opens up an opportunity for Horn 3-6 game two may have to go with a reverse on occasion or a jam or inside out to the right side to keep Parea from poaching. Seems to be controlling that front court now and Bobby can't get him out of there.
front wall, side wall, kiss winner. So now it's 8-3. Looks like Bobby's calling a timeout on the floor. So we'll stay here. Bits of information, folks. 31st edition Pan American Racquetball Championships. Temuco, Chile, as my partner in crime said. Capital of the world in here in Temuco. If you look on the map, it's way down south in Chile. If you go west, one will hit Easter Island and then keep going, you hit Auckland, New Zealand. Uh, for those of us in North America, it was a day and a half travel. And we anticipate that going back in a couple days. So, uh, lots of things to do down here from inland to the coast, north, south. Santiago is about uh, 700 kilometers away and uh, has over 5 million people. This city has this side of a half million. Argentina is about 100 miles east of here. North, south, Andes Mountains to the eastern part of Chile. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful area here. Very pretty. 8-3, Andre Paria serving to David Bobby Horn, representing Mexico and the USA, respectively. So here we are, 9-3. What do you think uh, Ellis told Bobby, Gustavo? Well, I think he told him to go back to what he was doing in game one. Impressivo, no? Wow. <laughs> he created... He created the proverbial 23-foot-wide court on that one. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed, but Andre uh, threw the ball back at him somewhat accusingly. Infraction. So he called infraction on the return of serve. And he took the ball in front of the, he broke the plane of the five-foot line, the receiving line which is a point for the server. Great strategy, but he didn't execute it. Replay called. That can be appealed. It can be appealed. As we discussed yesterday, everything can be appealed except a technical and a forfeit. Second serve. Call is good. Horn is appealing that the ball skipped, so it'll be in the hands of the Lions persons. Looks like they agree. Jorge Romero, Mesa de Hit the wall on that shot? Uh, yes. Great rally, Gustavo. We had about, we had six ceiling balls in Seguida, one after another. That's possible now with this ball. Didn't used to be. I've seen as many as 10 ceiling balls. Hitting the ball hard. Almost making it to the back wall. Woo! 
Reverse winner, Horn. Something I find interesting is we are uh, seeing a lot of the players wearing knee pads. Something which I do not remember them wearing so much previously. They spend a lot of time on the ground, on their knees. This court being unsealed stays dry, but it does scrape up the, the body. On the run, forehand, right side wall, front wall, two bounces, winner, Padilla. Nine four, game two. Padilla trying to force a tie break, which would go eleven would go eleven points. Both players are still entitled to two timeouts, one minute in length, and they're entitled to three usable appeals. If either lines person agrees with the referee's call, an appeal is used. There's no bogus uh, or additional appeal as in the USA on the game, at, uh, game point. Score stays the same. Bobby's hanging in there. rephrase uh, my statement. Bonus, not bogus. Miss hit, right side. 6-9, as you said, Gustavo, converging the score, staying around. Yeah, just hanging Put, in there. Putting the pressure on Andre. Different twists on the serve by Bobby, even though they're drive serves. His footwork's different, his locations. Sometimes he comes over the top, other times he cuts it. So we're going to stay here, folks. Tumuco Chile, Complejo Herman Becker. This is part of an athletic uh, discipline complex of multiple sports, and it's called uh, Parque Municipal. Uh, the Parque was built in 1981. This venue on park grounds was built in 2010 prior to the Pan American Racquetball Championships in 2012 being available for us to come here. Uh, this tournament was also held in Santiago, the capital, uh, back in the early 2000s. Hmm. Multiple cities in Latin America uh, have hosted this event. As we said, the first one was in uh, Caracas in Venezuela in 1987. Next year, where are we going? We're going to uh, Mexico again. Site of the 1994 World Championships? Uh, is, World. Uh, yes, it is. San Luis Potosí. No, I'm wrong. Then it's, uh, it's, it's uh, Chihuahua Ciudad City. Chihuahua, yeah. Yeah, 94 was San Luis. Campestre. Paria, nine, horn, Six, game one, game one. Game one was won by Horn 15-13, so we're at 10-6, game two. Side out, wide angle by Bobby Horn. 6-10 in game two. Unnerving, Gustavo. He hit good shots, and Priya's right there to retrieve him. I know, I know. 
Then you try to make your shot better, and guess what? You skip it. He tried to nick that ball off the side wall. It didn't nick, and he was fortunate because Perea had an open shot at that. Skipped it. 7-10. Make that eight with another skip. Coming back. Comes same back. As Comes back with the same serve. Just like game one, just creeping back into it. Frustration building on Perea. Seems to me a timeout should be called here. Maybe they're saving them for tomorrow. <laughs> Not sure if Andre's used all his timeouts, though. I don't believe so. If they and if they didn't, that would be a travesty, would it not? A travesty, yes, it would. Eleven ten, Perea back in the lead. Previous inning, he had relinquished the lead. Wow, that's impressive. He did that before. It's a shot that he's obviously perfected. Part of his training regimen. 10-11, game two. I think he's explaining how he's gonna roll out the next one. <laughs> that should be avoidable. Miss hit should be an avoidable. You don't call the avoidable, then you're awarding the player who hit the bad shot. Right call by Donnie Maggi, Gustavo. I think so. Donnie's on top of things. 11-10, Perea, second time. Textbook, you're an instructor of the game. Explain to people that may be new watching our telecast. Well, the game itself, you know, consists of uh, having the ball bounce more than once after it hits the front wall. And frustration, frustration mounting up. Now, could that be in a a technical? The answer is yes. Was it called? The answer is, we'll find out. We'll find out. It's called a referee technical, folks. Did reduction of one point on the player's score. Comportment, comportment. One of the disadvantages of getting a technical called against you more than just the negative point it gives some momentum to the other uh, player. And if you're foolish enough to do it two more times, you're disqualified from the match. That is correct. Perea has been, uh, been on this stage many, many times. And he should know better. Especially look at the scores, 13-15 in game one, it's 10-12. So if, if he wins this game, he will have had to score 16 points. It's just not something that you want to do. Sure, frustration comes in, and you want to manifest it in different, different ways. 
Bobby's taking his time, wiping the floor. Uh, players are entitled to two normal timeouts. If there's an injury, then the injury timeout protocol comes into play. And fortunately, we haven't had a we have not had multiple towel timeouts because there's a limited number of towel timeouts if the referee is not in control. Reverse E that time. Great location. Horn wasn't able to identify that serve early enough and consequently skipped the ball in, so it's 11-12. Game two, Padilla serving. Two Conejos on the floor, huh, Gustavo? Very quick. Both of them. Bobby a little bit taller. They're both very slender. Strong legs, the both of them. Very strong legs. Can get to everything. Cover that court. They make it look really small. 12-11 horn. Ball replay means first serve again. Long rally for not. Look for that short crack, Gustavo. Boy, that looked that looked good to me. If he has an appeal, he should appeal it. Nice crack. <coughs> that would have been huge. Yes. <laughs> Disappointed he didn't get that sh short crack call on the serve. So now Padilla coming in 11-12, game two. Replay, first serve. Two years ago, the International Racquetball Federation agreed to restore the two serve rule in all events. Two serves, two minutes between games, two timeouts each game. 2-2-2, two, two, two. that's how I was describing it, explaining it to the players in the orientation. And on the end is three. Three available appeals. So it's tied at 12. Will that technical come back to haunt Parilla? Great snap forehand down the side. 13-12, Padilla. Will Horn use another timeout? Mateo Claros, Luis Aguilar de Bolivia, Diego Garcia, Roberto Arellano de Bolivia, Cancha. Patrino, mesa de control. Game point number one. Question is, will he get to 16? Now he used his 
second timeout. So, folks, let's talk about the technical fouls. If comportment behavior is something where we can slap somebody's hand and say, hey, please don't do that again. For example, somebody takes an additional five seconds on a timeout, they may get a technical warning. Don't do it again. Uh, there are a couple of rules built into warnings. For example, server failing to put the serve into play within the 10 second time frame and or the receiver not being in a ready position to receive the serve within 10 seconds. Both players per match in, in, in each position gets one technical warning, okay? Now, when the comportment is out of line, like Danny Maggi thought on uh, Paria, he assessed what's called a referee technical. So what happens on that, Gustavo? That is a call that was made by the official. In that case, Maggi decided to take away a point from uh, Parija. Uh, he thought it was aggravated enough to warrant that. Did not feel he needed to give a warning. And so Bobby staves off uh, game point number one, trying to close this out 12 14. <coughs> Paria effectively has scored 15 points this game. With the one point reduction, he finds himself at 14. Great touch. So Bobby earlier put his hand up saying two bounces. He's confident it was not. He's not going to appeal it. Not even winded. Andre, amazing. Either player, they're just uh, very, very good shape. Well, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Let's see what the call is. We're not going to speculate, folks. Okay, so he stopped his he stopped his movement, but in international play, the serve starts when the ball's released. I'm not convinced that the ball was released. It was not released. Gary Mazaroff is our head official, so the officials are coming over to discuss this call now with Gary Mazaroff. So a bit of controversy. They're just getting some clarity on the ruling there. Gary says if the ball drops in international play, that means he started the serve. He's saying he didn't see him drop it. The referee will have Gary come back and explain that for us all. One moment. Well, there are a couple elements here. Uh, Gustavo and I did not see him release the ball. The serve in international play begins with the release. So if he did not release it, then he has the 10 seconds, which he can start again. But he could call a fake serve or a box serve, which is a fault. Uh, two serve division. Danny says he dropped the ball and failed to go through with the motion. So the call is second serve. If that were on the second serve, it would be a side out. Safety hold up. Good Gustavo, Danny handled that very professionally because 
that situation rarely happens. It's a surprise. You want to make sure you make the right call before moving onward. Especially look at the look at the score here. So this is this is game point number three or four right now. He did the right thing to come to the. Uh, wow. Impressive. Very impressive. Two bounces. Do you think Bobby was saying the ball hit above the 12-foot line? I think he was, but you can't see that as an official. Folks, in international play, there's a demarcation point 12 feet above the floor on the back wall. He's pointing. Anything that goes beyond that is a dead ball. If it goes directly out, whoever hit the ball loses that rally. If it there's a rebote, a, a rebound, and it goes out. It's a replay, reverse back to first serve. <coughs> Regardless, when we return to, to action, it'll be 13-14. Remember, Paria lost a point earlier, and had that not happened, he would have closed out game two. Gustavo, the nuances of the rules. Well, I think uh, in this case, he's going to regret what he did in banging the the racket or the ball against the, the back wall because that uh, could in fact uh, make him lose this match. Much to the angst of his dad. I mean, he's not complimenting him here, Gustavo. He's not complimenting him here. I think he's trying to motivate him and he has. Bobby's energized. Fourteen, fourteen, match point number one. You can see that the uh, there's mojado. The floor is wet. Now the the ref, head referee can insist. I say insist on the players changing their garment, their their shirt. If they go tiebreaker, I'm certain they will change their shirts or be requested to. Just another nuance, a nuance of coaching. Make sure you're ready. You have enough pieces in your uniform, no excuses. You bring enough, you launder your shirts, whatever. You need to be ready. And if Danny dictates that they need to change, they're entitled to uh, up to two minutes to secure a replacement shirt. Mm -hmm. Match point number one, short serve. Replay. <coughs> Changing his strings. So now this is an equipment timeout, and he's entitled, this is a referee timeout in international play. Whether Bobby's used up his own or not, he's entitled to up to 30 seconds to get another racket. And David Ellis should not be advising him. If he is, he gets a warning technical. Just enough time to get a different racket. The other player is advised to stay on the court as well. So give him a couple hits and then play. Match point number two, folks. 14-14, game two. Men's second semifinal, singles. Just saw Andre Perea skip in, match point. 
There were four ceiling balls exchanged during that rally. And Gustavo, to wrap this up, it should have gone tiebreaker. It didn't. Frustration set in, not only on the players' part, but his coaching staff as well. And kudos to Team USA, who now earns a berth in the men's singles final. Gary, it's great working with you. I do think uh, what you said earlier about the frustration building up is what happened here. You could see it in Andre Parrilla and his coaches, and that technical is what really uh, set him back here. Good job by the officiating crew, keeping things in control. The crowd loved it. Dave Ellis loved it. 